Matt, you want to start out? Sure. All right. How's everybody doing? Um, my name is Coach Matt Melagrano. Um, I'm uh, born and raised in upstate New York, went to college up here, played college soccer. Um, I currently coach for uh, Sage College, Russell Sage College in Albany, um, coach on the men's side there. And then I own a goalkeeper academy, uh, BLGK Academy, wearing the hat. Um, and I coach for a couple clubs in the area, um, really just trying to make as many goalkeepers as I can better. Um, that's all around. That's about it for me. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, my name is Brett. I'm, I'm originally from New York, lived kind of everywhere, military guys, soccer, played pro in Germany, started coaching in Germany. Uh, I've come back, coached college, uh, currently coaching youth clubs, private keepers, and uh, a semi-pro men's team I'm the head coach for. So um, I bring – the one thing I usually say when I'm talking to goalkeepers is I bring – uh, the one unique aspect that I think is I'm still, I've played midfielder way more than I've played goalkeeper. Um, I did not switch to goalkeeper until college. So um, I had to learn quick at the end. And then I had to learn a lot of what you guys go through learning it younger because I never had those experiences. So it took me a while to kind of get my head around some of the stuff you guys go through. But since then, we've done really good with keeper. So a um, couple things on this one. This one is better when it's interactive. We're going to ask tons of questions. There's lots of video. There's things where um, I'm going to tell you ahead of time. Some of this is geared towards our methodology. So there are going to be differences between some of the things we're telling you and maybe what you do with your team. Perfectly fine. That's going to be a great point for you to ask a question. Say, hey, you just said A, B, and C, but my coach wants us doing D, E, and F. How does this apply? Everything we're going to talk about applies either way. So um, ask a question on it. And I'd say, go ahead. For those of you guys even got mute on, turn it off because we'll, it's going to be better if we talk as we go. I'm going to go through the, uh, so you can kind of see the flow, foundation, game model, current and future, and give it a go. Um, I'm going to try and go through the foundation stuff fairly quick because the, I want to get into the other three with you guys. Okay. So uh, if I start talking, you got a question on anything, ask it as we go. Okay. So that's why I'm saying kind of keep those Keep those mics ready to go. All right, on the foundation, <clears throat> base understandings that we build our application, or we, you build your game upon. Okay, so you see down here, terminology, key concepts, phase of play, area of play. These are kind of the, the main areas that we try to clear up first. Um, terminology, strong side, weak side, core, vantage point, transitions. There's more, but these are the ones that I find that tend to be where we start with keepers when we're talking uh, transition specifically. So we'll hit on these. Um, transition. So strong side, weak side, and core. Um, I'll give you guys, this is the younger version. So this is usually when people are still playing 77, 99. And I'll just show you both because I think understanding the flow helps. This is you're the goalie on the left side. We're obviously attacking to the right. And we're talking about these, uh, vertical, cha these vertical channels. So I have a left a middle and a right. One thing that we do is we begin to number these so that it can help with specific details on conversation. So on this one, the, the hard thing to remember when it's just three is it's only odd numbers. This is, this is channel one on the left. This is channel three and this is channel five. There is no even numbers yet. That's what we add when you guys get to 11 to 11, which is obviously what you guys are. So I'm gonna show you that one. We'll spend a little more time on that. So now this is channel one, this is channel two, this is channel three, channel four, channel five. Does that make sense? Okay. And we also divide the field into sections moving up the field. A, uh, level A is basically the top of your goal box. Level B goes up to halfway from there between your goal box and midfield. So that's level B. C is at midfield, so A, B, and C are in your half. And then D, E, and F are in the far half. Um, questions, there should, be, there should be some questions. So let's just see from you guys watching because there's, there's some markings on this that I haven't touched on. So take a look, do you have questions, anything I've said or any of the remaining markings that we haven't talked about? Circles. Okay, so the circles. 
One thing that we do, and this would be, that's a great question. We organize our formations differently. <clears throat> we don't talk about three lines. So like four, three, three. Um, our players don't tend to see the game that way. Um, our players see three and seven. Three in the core, seven on the periphery. Okay, so this is the core. The core never leaves channel three. This will, the reason I say that is because it'll become important to even how you do it. But you can map back and forth between three lines and what we do. Okay, but you'll understand. I want you to understand why we do it. And then you can find the parallel in your kind of three layers of, of three, three, it's basically three lines. And we're saying, uh, in our in our view, it should be circles instead of lines, but we'll get to that. The core is always here. The periphery is always here. So, uh, real quick, have first question, Caleb. Give me give me two positions that would be in the periphery. Definitely the wingers. Wingers for sure. Yep. And then probably the striker. Yep, striker. Okay, Jared, give us give us uh, anybody else, and it can be any formation. Outside backs? What's that? Outside backs? Yeah, outside backs for sure. Yep. Um, who else we got on here? I know I've got my window kind of limited. Hayden. Who else? Who else would be considered in the periphery in this ring here? We've said oh. wings, outside backs, forward, other wing. Here, so what else? Uh, midfield, like center attacking mid. No, the center mids will be in here on the core. So they're in they're in charge of this space here, surrounding the core. So the okay. periphery surrounds the midfield, and the midfield surrounds the core. All of them, I guess, surround the core. Who, who's back here? Uh, Our center backs. Yep, center backs. Yeah, you're back here. So, so your center backs, defenders. So in our, in my world, at least we see all of these people more like each other, which is a little bit strange when you're talking about defenders and forwards are more like each other. And then center mids are the ones that are different. Okay. But we'll get into why. Okay. What's one other thing about the field lines? What's something unusual? Cause we just said, it's not a pure checkerboard, is it? There's something, there's a part where it changes. Who sees it? Quite any thoughts? Look, look at it. Try to focus on the on this one. It's yellow and pink. Kind of divide the the rows and channels. It's more towards the offensive zone rather than defensive zone. Which part? Uh, I mean, the, all the circles are on the off, uh, more towards the offensive side. Yeah, that's true. And this and these circles in our in our view move up and down the field. Yeah, you're correct. This is in a specific area we call consolidation. And that's one of the phases of the game. We'll get into that in a second. But forget about the circles for a second. Try to go just with the lines on the field. Where do they where do they deviate from the kind of the check the chessboard? The corners. Yeah. And A and F. And what do they do? Line up with the goalpost six yard um, box and the, yeah, the goalpost in the six yard box. Yeah. So if you can imagine this, so I said this, these three circles move up and down the field. Imagine if I move them one zone higher, this circle begins to come close to this line. Does that make sense? So these, this one is the line turning into goal because everything at this point is turning towards goal regardless of what strategy they've used to move between B and E. At, by the time we get to E, we have to start moving towards the goal in some capacity, whether we cut inside or we cross it or whatever we're going to do, but things have to start angling towards the goal because there's no point just dribbling down and across the line. They're going to get any points for that. So <clears throat> here's the thing. Uh, let's, say, let's say here, the core. So in our world, I'll just give you an example, then I'll ask one or two questions. We're going to move on. The core in this case, we I would tell our players the core is in 3D. Not three, not 3D like movies, but 3D what? Channel three, level D. Does that make sense? 
where would our center backs be using that terminology? Uh, yeah, CC. Three. What was it? C what? Three. Okay. Could be C3. What if you play uh, kind of like Man City and they push their guys really wide? Uh, probably would they would be in uh, like D3 uh, or D4, D2 or C4, C2. Yep. C2 and four. Yep. Okay. So that's a little bit on how your coach uh, wants you to play, you know, and that, and that comes down to it, but they will start to occupy these spaces. Okay. Um, how about, what would be your best guess on an attacking center mid? Let's say we're playing with one, one attacking center mid. Where would where would you guess they would be? At least three D, maybe maybe even three E. So I would say it'll be this space here because yeah. one of the things, and we're going to start hitting on this. A lot of what a lot of what we do has to do with what you can see. So if I'm a center mid and I'm in charge of this area, I have to first be able to see it. Does that make sense? So if I'm partway in it, no matter which way I turn, there's always going to be a part I can't see. Does that make sense? Like if I'm standing here and I'm looking left, I can see all of this space over here, but I still can't see this space here if I'm, if I'm standing where that cursor is. Does that make sense? Okay, so our center mids will tend to occupy this space here. Here's, here's why. We're going to talk about those, that same principle as it applies to you guys. All right, so, but at least you got an idea. Strong side, if the ball, sorry, if the ball was here, strong side would be channels four and five. The core is always three, so you don't have to memorize it. And if the ball, so if the ball was here, the weak side would be one and two. Does that make sense? Okay, if the ball was over here by this sideline, the weak side is four and five. The core is still three. Here's why. Goalkeepers, you are always in charge of organizing the core and the weak side. 100%. Now, you can also organize the strong side, but you are one of the few people that has an ability to see the core and the weak side. So you have, you are, you have to be in charge of it. Okay? We'll go through a couple other reasons why you want to be in charge of it. And we're just going to hit on these, and we'll we'll get into the conversations. All right, this one vantage point. Uh, uh, let's see, Sanjay, can you? How about you read it, read vantage point for us? Just the stuff in the. Well, actually, go ahead and read out, read it all. Okay. Um, the vantage point satisfies your role of the team and provides the best location to observe all possible attacks quickly. Okay. It includes where you are and where you are facing. Okay, so let's look at this picture here real quick. Okay, um, so the goalkeepers at the, let's talk about the one at the bottom, okay, in the purple, playing with the green team. Red has the ball up in this corner, which in our, <clears throat> once again, in my terminology would be 5E or 5F. Does that make sense? Okay, everyone kind of see the logic off to the right along this, this, this whole channel wide of the goal box is all channel five. Okay, so they would be in 5E or 5F with the ball. Where is the core. Like, probably like, oh, like three or two. And What's that? Three, like, actually, no, it's probably two, like, well, so here, we'll, we'll kind of go back. So remember, co the core, Matt, this is actually about the exact same size of the core, the size of the center circle. Imagine this like a ping pong ball. It just floats up the field and down the field. It never moves left and right. So this is this whole thing is channel three. So the one, two, three, four little mowing stripes all the way up. This is channel three. Okay. These two are channel four, these three are channel five. I can use some of the lines on the field as little cheat codes. So the center circle is always channel three, okay? Center circle to the edge of the goal box, if we drew it all the way down, this is channel four, this is channel five. So in this moment, what would strong side? Is it strong side is the right side or the left side? 
The right side. Right, right side. side. Sure. Yep. So the first two things you have to organize are core and weak side, which is all of channel one and two. So the first question is, is, is she in a position as a girls team, is she in a position to see core and weak? What do you think? Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. She might, right now, I think she can see the core pretty easy. She's got a, you know, her, I think her body's kind of facing up this way. She can still see out of the corner of eye of the core. At the moment, she might have a little bit of, she's going to have to turn her head to check the weak side. Okay. Which maybe she's doing. I don't know. This is just one picture. Okay. But her job is to organize this first this second, this third. Okay, and that's gonna be different than most keepers. Most keepers try to organize this first. Okay, and we'll, we'll get into why. Um, questions on it? We're gonna hit it a couple of times so we can, we can come back, but any questions on this? But just kind of even the terminology. Um, a quick question, just- um, yeah. is like um, if the ball is in the core section, is like you mean we don't worry about weak side, strong side. We just you mean like that doesn't really apply. If the yeah, that's a fair question. Yeah, if they can get into the core, um, then technically there is no. Um, at that point, here's here's the problem. There there actually is no weak side. The whole everything's everything is strong side at that point. Um, and I'll explain why. Um, we are gonna get and that comes in our principle. So vantage point. Let's go back out a bit. Transitions, this is what we're talking about today, but here's, let me just hit on it real quick, okay? Does everybody agree? And I don't know how much, like I said, I don't know how much some clubs train transitions a lot and some don't train them very much, but everyone understands there's there's a, clearly a time we're playing offense and we're in possession. There's clearly a time we're playing defense. The transitions are the in-between times. Does that, does everybody understand that part of it? Yes. Okay, so... The big thing is, is now if, if we're competing, the team that can accurately and quickly switch from one to the other before their team, before their opponent can, they have an advantage. If I can get into offense and be in all the right positions before the other team can organize defensively, we can take advantage of them. If we can get into defense before the other team can get organized offensively, we can take advantage of them. Does that make sense? Okay, the transitions 100% are in, that is the goalkeepers, you are in charge of it. And people always say you're in charge of different things, but 100% transitions goalkeeper is in charge of, whether you're actively playing it or you're directing it. So if you see what I said, biggest factors of transitions, accuracy of transition, accuracy is always first. Speed is always second. Once we're accurate, now how fast can we do it before we get sloppy? And this word here, I put direction, and that's definitely for goalkeepers. And I know the big one is I didn't put communication. It is communication, but why did I choose direction over communication? Because direction is more specific. It's like you're helping your teammates, giving them directions, but communication, it could be anything. And why and why would I make why would I want to make that distinction? Or why would I want to teach you guys that? It's really important, the difference between communication and direction. You need to be effective with your communication. Like you need to make sure it's giving direction and not just, you know, saying something that will be helpful. Okay, 100% agree. that, And that'll fall under accuracy of transition. So your communication is included in that, 100%. What's the other, what's the other part? The other one will start to tell you a little bit of why so read down number two. Number two starts to tell you why direction and not communication. What is number two? Speed of transition. Yep. So one of the one of the things to take from this is um, where communication, we could have a little bit of a discussion. I'm going to say something. You might have an opinion. We have a conversation. We go back and forth. On transitions, we don't have any time. So this is direction and so as a goalkeeper one you need to be like you said you need to know what we're transitioning to but you need to be able to communicate that very quickly 
Okay, this is the one time where we really don't have uh, time because every second we lose, it's a, it's kind of a trade. The other team gets an advantage. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so let's go past terminology. I wanted to get past that. Well, now let's get into key, some of the key concepts. Okay, um, through, over, and around. So I'm gonna go, let's go to through. There are three ways that we can go that anybody, doesn't matter what style of play, doesn't matter <clears throat> what formation, there are three ways to uh, get through another team. I can go through them, I can go over them, and I can go around them, okay? Um, what we try to teach everybody is, I wanna go through in the order that causes the most problems for defenses, okay? So that means through is first. It's the fastest way to go. It causes the most confusion. It gives them the least time to react. And it causes the most uncoordinated reaction. So think about this. If you guys played uh, at, at the beginning of practices, if you guys play, you know, like a rondo or keep away at the beginning, yeah. if, there's, if there's two defenders or three defenders in the middle, what's, the, what's usually the one rule? Don't get. Don't get split. split. Don't, get, don't get split. Okay. Now take that same idea. There's a reason that that idea that don't get split is the main thing while you're on defense. And it's because it causes the most confusion. It's the fastest way through both of you. It gives both of you the least time to react and it causes the most uncoordinated reaction. So one of the things, instead of just thinking that as a warm up, that is also true in the game. Does that make sense? So let's, let's look here real quick, quick video. I don't know why this thing's Doing that. Let's go. All right. So the black team. Now let's go back a little bit. All right. Black team wins the ball. Splits two red players. Turns. Okay. Dribbles through two red players. Passes through two red players. Passes through two red players. Goal. Through, 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 goal. Did everybody see it? One more time real quick. Oops. Okay, through two red players, through two red players. He has the choice. You see, he could go around right now and pass it outside, but he comes back through two red players, through two red players again with the back heel and a goal. Very difficult for the defense to defend it with the constant splits. Okay, let's compare that to over. This one's pretty simple. You guys see this a lot. This is probably the most common in the US. He's gonna to touch the ball to the inside and then he's gonna ping it, puts it over. Okay, look at, notice the difference. Is the defense ready? Are they organized to handle this ball? Somewhat, I'm not gonna say perfect, but kind of, right? Even though we, we pushed it forward, Pressure's close to the ball already, okay? He's got support moving in. He's got support recovering, and these two guys are also recovering into the core, okay? So we got past them, but we didn't really cause them a lot of headaches yet. Does that make sense? Yeah, they were easy. it was easy to recover for them. Yeah, it, it, nothing about it was really super hard. It's Yeah, I mean, it, yes, they, they moved the ball forward quite a bit, but the defense doesn't look like they're panicking, like they know how to handle this, okay? So now let's look at the, here's some of the categories of, of over. It is the second fastest way to attack. It does cause some confusion. Uh, it makes the reaction time average, and there is a partially coordinated. So if we compare that to the first one, does everyone see how it, each one of these is a little bit less, but still good? as far as if we were the attacking team, to have this effect on the defense. These are all good, but slightly less than through. Does everybody agree? Yeah. Okay. And now let's compare it to the last one around. Okay. So this is going to be an exercise. And this is more of a drill. So he'll pass and we'll start it. I don't know it goes back like that. It's interesting.
Okay, around, around. Does everyone know what I mean by what I'm saying around? Why am I saying around? Why are these passes around? Because they're not splitting them or going over the top. They're not they just, splitting. Yep, hundred percent. You nailed it. And then that one. What's that one? Through. That one was through. All right. So I want you to watch this one more time. Um, I'll call out the around, around, around stuff. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to watch how quick do the three defenders react in some way. Okay. Here we go. Around. 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 Now watch this one. Watch the reaction of the defense through. What was the difference? They had to turn much more sharp. Had to turn more sharp. Yep. hundred percent. That's part of it. Um, would you say when they were going around, 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 did all three react? I'm going to say simultaneously, but they all reacted and they all reacted even before the ball arrived at the next person's foot. Is that fair to say? Like they all turned left or they all turned right, whatever way they, they were going, they all turned, they all turned pretty quick and they all started doing whatever they were going to do, a pressure, cover, balance, whatever they were, but they all started moving towards their next job pretty quick as soon as it leaves the foot. Watch it, the reaction on the, on the last one, okay, on the, on the split. I think it's here. I'll play it. Sorry, I cut it off. What's the difference in the reaction? Did, did all three start moving instantly? No. No. What, what do you think? How many started moving? Uh, two. Two and just barely. For the most part, just one. The other ones kind of turned and moved, but they're more or less in the same position they were in before the pass. So this is one of the effects of through as compared to around. So you've got a really good kind of example to compare. The other passes, all the other passes, defense responded immediately. When they went through, only one responded. Sometimes you'll get two. A really good team, you'll get three. But you suddenly start getting a mixed reaction. And now when they have a mixed reaction, opportunities start to open up. Okay? The defense has to move together. So if one moves and two don't, it opens things up. Does that make sense? So this is one of the reasons why the offense wants to go through. So here's, here's that order. So this is in terms of the offense. Their first choice is to go through. Their second choice is to go over. Their third choice is to go around. Okay. How about when we're on defense? Now you're in charge of organizing your defense. What, what's our order of preference when, when the other team has the ball? Around, then over, then through. Yeah, absolutely. Exact opposite. Okay. We want them to go the slowest possible way to go. Okay. I want the slowest way. Um, I want no confusion for our team. I want the most time to react to anything they do. And I want all of our reactions to be coordinated. Okay. So on offense, I want to go through. On defense, I want to go around. I want them to go around. Does that make sense? So now I'm giving two different types of instructions. If you are a goalkeeper that um, likes to help your offense, then you are going to be directing towards possibilities to help us go through instead of over and around. And if I can't go through, Camilla, what would I, if I can't go through, what would I try to encourage my team to do? Over? Over, yeah. And if I can't do through and I can't do over, then what are we going to do? Around. Around. Yeah, we're going to take the best one of the three. All right, here's, and here's why. This is, now I will tell you, this is part of kind of our methodology. So, Possession, and I'm from a, a total football background, but this is, does anyone know who this person is? Johan Cruyff. Yeah, Johan Cruyff. Does anybody, does anybody know who he is? He played for Barca and Netherlands and Ajax. Yep, Barca and Ajax. He's probably, even if you talk to anybody, almost everybody on the planet will put him somewhere in the top two or three players uh, to ever have played the game. Um, he completely changed how Barca plays. He's uh, not alone, but um, he's kind of known for it. <clears throat> so look, look at what he look what he says in the quote. And then look at the two things. This is very simple, but it, but you'll find that this is 
this can affect so many of your decisions. So I see a lot of goalkeepers not necessarily giving directions in offense. And they start talking when they're on defense. Does that, does that make sense? Is it, have you guys seen goalkeepers like this? Maybe you do this, but have you, have you guys seen this where goalkeepers are kind of quiet on offense, but as soon as we lose the ball, they start talking. Okay. So one of the things that I'll tell you is if we can increase possession, then I don't have to play defense. So in a way, by helping my team to keep possession, I am playing defense. I'm preventing the other team from having the ball. Is that everybody with me? Yes, no, kind of? Yes. Yes. Cool. All right. So let's, let's add these two things here. Think like an attacker. All right. So this is where we start to get a little different. So now if I'm, let's talk about organizing on defense. So part of it is you want to understand what the attacker is trying to do. So if I want to beat them, it's going to help me if I understand how they think. Does that make sense? Tell me about this space here. What's special about it? Hayden, what do you think? All right, what was that? What's this space this space here? What's special about it? Why would it why why am I putting this down for understanding an attacker? Um, because that's the most dangerous spot for attacker to shoot. Yeah, does anybody know the actual statistics? No. So right now I think the latest research is 93% of all goals come from this space. Doesn't matter if you play down the lines and cross it in. Doesn't mean if you attack the middle. Doesn't mean if you switch play. The style doesn't matter. 93% of all goals come from this space. So if it's someone that sends it down the wing, they like to attack the corners, but they still cross it into this space. So they just access it at the last second. They access the space from the side. Okay. A group that likes to dribble or com do combos through the middle, they access the space from below. Okay, or maybe they come from the side as well. It can change. But the point is, if I know where they're trying to get to, this begins to give me a little bit of, of an idea of what areas are more important to organize than others. So, for example, if they have the ball out here, should I send a, a defender who's here to run out here? I'd say, like... Not even until he goes into the 18. It's like because if if he's in the corner, he, he's not going to be able to do anything except for cross it. Right. I mean, I've always got to send one to put pressure. Right. I mean, we we always want to put pressure on the player no matter where they are. Okay. So that that's fine. But do I want to send a second player? Do I want to have two or three hanging out here? Doesn't it make more sense to put them where the ball's going instead of where it's going to fly over their heads? Or what if there's a person open to mark here and a person here, and I've only got one defender, which one do I tell them to mark? The one in the red box? It can be. I mean, you can do it. You can handle it one, two ways. You can have him mark it, or you can tell him to go lock this one down, and now he is yours. But now you've got to be more aggressive off your line. So it, it, there's two ways to handle it. It's not like it's a written rule. But of the two, which one is the more dangerous? The, the guy out box. here, in the, yeah, the guy in the red box or the girl in the red box. Absolutely. So understanding that is going to help you organize so that you're not marking people less important at the expense of leaving people open that are. Does that make sense? A lot of times, you know, how you handle kind of emergency situations is important. All right. Let's talk about this picture. There's another, um, <clears throat> you don't have to worry about the terminology. You'll hear different names for it. We call it the kill zone. Kill zone is, and I have, to just two examples, so don't you don't have to overthink it. Um, we have one team attacking to the left and one team attacking to the right. So I just I had one attacking against four defenders and one attacking against three. This is the bottom part of the core, okay, in both cases. Some people call it a half space, okay? Um, some people like a uh, false, has anyone ever heard of a false nine? Or can anyone explain to me what does that mean? False nine. False nine is like like a four three three, but the striker like plays like 
a little bit for, uh, further back. Yeah, so he drops back and almost kind of becomes a midfielder. Like he starts as a forward, but he, he comes in and either he checks down or he floats down, but he, he usually turns himself into a midfielder. The, that's one strategy of accessing the skill zone. Okay, there are other strategies. I can enter it from the side. I can enter it from below. I can enter it on angles, all kinds of different ways. But here's the thing that is important to you as a goalkeeper. So if our goal is to never let people go through us, look what the choices are once they do find this space. This pass, is that a split? Yeah. Who's it, who's it splitting? The fullback and uh, the left center back. Yep. How about this pass? Is that a split? Yeah, it's uh, one yeah. of the center backs. Yep. How about this pass? Is that a split? Yes, it's split the center back and the outside right back. Yep. Even if I had him pass out here, would that be a split? If I drew a line this way? Technically, he's spinning the midfielder and the right wing. Yeah, and it would be some other player because we haven't drawn them all, right? But point is, is so here's the thing. If we're saying th the through pass is the most dangerous thing that an offense can do, the problem is if they can get to this kill zone under control, every next pass is a through is a is a split. So what's a good strategy for me as a goalkeeper knowing that? Uh, you'd have to stand more off your line and then communicate with your uh, with your midfield and defenders to like get more compact. Okay, I agree. I would and. And some of that is, some of what you said is, you kind of want to divide this into two things. My first goal is I don't ever want them to get here, period. I'm going to do my best to organize that this ball never gets here, whether I have midfielders marking, whether I have midfielders blocking access angles, whether I pull in other players to block access angles, whatever it is, I'm going to try to stop them from ever getting here in the first place. And then there's the other side of the question. Well, if they get here, then how do I, how do I manage it? And then that's like what you said. I'm going to shrink these gates up as tight as possible so that those through balls are at least harder to do. And if I pull, let's say I pull this guy in and I pull this guy in, what now becomes the easiest pass for this guy? Let's say I move that. Let's talk about this one on top over by channel one. I pull him in to, into channel two. Really tight space. Let's say this one becomes cut off. What's the now the easy pass for him to get away with? Uh, just to the wings to a supporting player. And notice this is now for the people between him and the goal. Would this be through, over, or around? Around. Around, which is what we want. You see what I mean? So, so yes, once we get in trouble, I'm going to be pulling people in because I want him to go around. I want him to go back to the slowest possible way. I want to take away the most dangerous way, which is through. Okay, but once again, this is so you understand how the, how the attackers are thinking. Okay. Now let's look here. <clears throat> um, let's talk about the goalkeeper. So at the bottom, White has the ball up. Uh, this would be uh, probably 4D, four, four 4E. Four e up here everyone see see the player up here that's white attacking here okay tell me about goalkeeper position uh goalkeeper orientation let's start with that what do you think good bad you change uh, he it could be a bit, he could be a bit farther farther off his line yeah, but, um, I think he could be a bit higher. yeah okay how you guys tell i'm gonna slowly move it up you guys tell me when you think uh it's good enough there okay in the D, does anybody disagree, higher or lower? It's okay. We're we're just having a talk. I think I'm like top a little of D, maybe. Say it again. Top of the D. Top of the D. Okay, five six yards more. Okay, and sometimes that's important. Okay. Um, and this will be. I'll have Coach Matt kind of chime in. Our methodology that we teach. I always try to have remember those lines. So our defenders right now are in channel C. That's what this is. This space here. So I would want him no less than channel B. So he would be pretty much what you guys are talking about. He's somewhere in this D or she's somewhere in this D, okay? Because we always want our goalkeepers to be trailing our defense by just 
a little more than one level. So they're in C, he's in B. Okay, Matt, what kind of what kind of stuff do you guys talk about as far as how you look at that? Yeah, so um, <clears throat> when I'm kind of giving my goalkeeper's tips, um, you know, I really, it, the emphasis has to be on how comfortable they are coming off their line um, and how much they trust their center backs and, and their back line, um, you know, their capability to recover quickly or, or you know, if you have a, a center back who is a little slower or bigger, whatever his whatever his thing is, if, if you don't trust him recovering as quickly, then you maybe want to be a little bit tighter to him or her um, to prevent those through balls and, and long balls or make it over the top. Um, you want to make sure that you're there to clean it up and either cycle the play out or just clear the ball away. Um, you know, because if you can make that save, you're going to have to make the save at some point if the ball's come out over the top. Um, so it's either you're going to be dealing with it inside your box or as a 1v1 cleaning the ball out, you know, 10 yards outside the 18. Um, personally, I think if we can, if we can nip the, the opportunity out and, and clean it out early, perfect. Then, then there's no shot on goal. They don't keep possession even near our box. They can't set anything up. We clear it out and then we transition to attack. Um, you know, it's, it's really, I see it as a feeling out process and it's a conversation that you have to have with your coach, with your defenders. Um, and, you know, you just have to be honest with yourself of, am I comfortable for one and, and two, am I capable to cover 20 yards outside my box or, or 10 yards outside my box? You know, you got to figure out where that, that line is that you won't cross. Who's got... Who's got some, you know, thoughts uh, between the, the younger keepers? Who, who thinks they do well at covering? So kind of I'll put it kind of back in our terminology, all of this channel three, so it's as wide as that center circle. The goalkeeper is in charge, in, in my mind, of everything behind the center back down channel three. You're in charge of the whole thing. Who feels comfortable that they have control of every inch of space of channel three behind the center backs when you play? Anyway, Sebastian, how about you? I'm not too sure. Not sure if you if you have control. Oh no, then then uh, yeah, you do, you do. Well, so so here's the thing. Like, let's say let's say if you don't feel like you have control, I don't feel I'm quick enough to cover some of the space out here. Okay, you've got two things. I can either now stand further out because now the distance to cover is shorter. Okay, which is usually the opposite of what a slow goalkeeper does. A slow goalkeeper goes backwards, typically, because they don't feel so confident. That's perfectly fine. But now what is what do these guys have to play? Uh, like right now, they're pressuring what some coaches would call this would be called mid block, because they've set up we've set up our defense at the middle of the field. What would I have to do if if you are slow and you are unwilling to come out? to hear and make this shorter. Now, where do these guys, where should these guys play? Uh, the back four should uh, drop a little bit more. Yeah, and, and if the back four drop, they, whoops. And if the back four drop, they all drop. Right. Sorry. So that would be, that would be something you'd, you'd talk with your coach and say, if you don't feel comfortable coming out, and if then I need to pull them back. Either way, I just got to shorten the distance. There's a couple ways of doing that. Has anyone heard of low block defense? What is that? So if this is mid block, if they're playing basically between C and D, okay, what would low block defense be? Probably like B. Yeah, I mean, it'd probably be in part of C. It's yeah. kind of like basketball. You drop back and you play defense in your half, in your court, okay? And that's another way of solving it because at the end of the day, I've just, if I'm not fast, I've got to shorten the distance between me and my center backs somehow. I can, co I can go to them or they can come to me. Either way, we have to shorten it. Otherwise, a lot of balls can be kicked into this space right here and it's just a foot race. 
If they have a fast player, we're in trouble. Okay. Does that make sense? Just trying to give you guys some ways of, of doing it. Um, okay, one phase ahead. So part of this is gonna be, can I have some options ready? So let's see, let me back this one up too. Okay, white team has the ball. Goalkeeper has it right now. He's swinging it out here to the side. Okay, blue team's trying to press. Okay, white side or white team gets locked too much into the strong side and turnover happens. Okay, at this moment, let's see if I can stop this. Hold on. Let me back it up. At this moment right here, if you're the blue goalkeeper and you wanted to help on offense, think of the principles through, over, and around. That's the order we want. Doesn't mean we get it, but that's the order we want. Do we have anything that lines up where through is possible and we have an advantage? And there's also, just because you can't see this, the play button, there's a blue player here. And then that's the only one hidden by this. There's a blue player right here. So what? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Um, you, there's a possibility for a through in between the last man and the, um, and the man like the white man in front of the blue this one here? The edge of the 18. These two here? Uh, no, on the more left on the strong side. These ones here? Uh, no, the the last man on at, on the very back and oh, the here? guy at the 18. That okay. Guy. Yep. I'm with you. Yep. Absolutely. Definitely. We could go through. He could turn. He could be going to go right away. Definitely. Where's another place? Oh. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, it might be a tough ball, but if they let the so the man right on top of the penalty spot or right next to it, if he sucks in a little bit more, then the guy like closer to the top of the D could probably slip through. This one here? Right there. Yep. Maybe so, so for me, and once again, this has a little bit to do with style of play. There is an answer where you could play directly to him because, one, you could get it to him. He's going to turn. It's not, we haven't split him yet, but in one touch, he'll split him off the dribble. Okay. And he's working back towards goal right away. Awesome. Love it. Okay. In another version, I have 2v1 in the kill zone. Okay. I've got the blue guy here that's hidden. So if this ball got played somehow anywhere in this, in the kill zone, if we could be under control, we do, we do have two against one. Okay. So we'll see what they do. They win the ball. He dribbles towards the kill zone. And they lay it off to the two guys we talked about. Okay, great. Now the ball keeps playing. Now be the yellow goalkeeper that just grabbed it. This is where, when we're talking one play ahead, so I'm going to stop it right now. You, you just grabbed the ball. Where, could, where are some areas you could play this ball right now? Where are some areas Blue's not ready to defend? The left side? Yep, left, uh, left. deep or high? Uh, so probably deep. Yeah, okay. So for the goalkeeper's left or your left? The goalkeeper's left. Okay, so over here? Yeah. So this would be, and once again, I don't I don't really care that you get all the, the terminology done, but this will be like where we have quick decisions with keepers. So you could say, they would say, hey, they played over to A1. This would be A1. A2 would be here. B1, B2. Any one of these. Okay. Where else? Somebody else, give me another space that the blue is not ready to defend. You could probably play just over um, the uh, set of guys where your cursor is. So right over there into the big space right there. Yeah, right, right where there. Cursor, yeah. And just who would space. and who would you be targeting with that ball? Um, the I think it's 27. So the guy on the left side running in. Yeah, right there. This so one like, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Love this one. This whole space right here, blue is not ready to defend. Most of them have their backs to it. They don't see it. And if you think about it, what if you could put the ball here? I'll just make it up. That's is that kind of in the space you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. So if you could if you could win that ball and throw quickly, who's probably going to get to that ball first out of all the players around it? I would probably say the guy I just mentioned before. Yep. He's going to get there first. And so now you've bypassed one, two, three, four, five. I don't know if there's a six, I think jumping. So that you've you've already bypassed six and we've gotten 
once he gets the ball here, he's in the kill zone because this is center back. So in one throw, kill zone on the center back already. Okay, that's one way. Doesn't mean it's, doesn't mean it's what you have to do. Okay, let's see what he does. So he grabs the ball, looks to his left, over to what you guys said, plays it back to his right, but he didn't play it deep. This is one last thing that is in the goalkeeper. Why did he play it there? And how did he know? Because he didn't look a lot of places. He looked two places. He looked low and left. So he looked over by A1. He didn't like what he saw for whatever reason. And then he instantly turned and looked here. He didn't look any other place. Why did he look here? Uh, since it was already the strong side from the previous play, so there would be more, uh, more players there. Yep, that's part of it. And then why did he look so... This is his right. He could have looked right and he could have looked high. He could have looked middle and he could have looked low. Why did he look middle before he looked high or low? Because it was more of like a like a through ball almost. Could be. Because it could be. Yeah, it, it could be. Um, I'll give you one other thing on this one. What's the formation of the blue team? What's your best guess? Probably 433. 433. So, and this is where I'll tell you kind of in our methodology, this is a quicker analysis. So this is a three and seven. There's three center mids and there's seven on the perimeter. Four, three, three, which area of the perimeter is the one that is naturally unguarded? The, like what, what doesn't have a natural defender already in that space? The, uh, the outside one. Yeah, like the outside, where an outside mid might be if yeah. you're playing with a, a formation with outside mids. There's a gap because you have the three forwards that are up on the high part of the perimeter and you have <clears throat> the four defenders who are on the low part of the perimeter. So there's a gap in the middle. So he, so that's why he looked there because he knew that they were playing 4-3-3. So this is something that he's probably had in his mind before the game even started. He's a pro. They have scouts. They know what formation they're going to play. You don't have that. How could you how could you find that out? How do you know what formation is there and maybe what gaps will be available to you? Analyzing through the game. So throughout the game, you mean keeping an eye out for you mean what they're playing, how they set up before the kick even goes off, other things like that. Say that one again, the last one. How they set up before the kick goes off, because usually they go exactly what they're gonna play. Like exactly. Off the so so that's what we used to tell kids all the time. They advertise their formation at kickoff. They're going to go line up exactly in 4-3-3, 4-4-2, 3-5-2, whatever they're playing. And each formation has strengths and weaknesses, okay? 4-3-3, by definition, they're going to have problems on the outside mids. Now, maybe they press their defenders up, and you're going to have to adjust during the game. Okay, maybe they have a, a unique way of solving that problem. So you watch. But by definition, that formation has weaknesses at those points, Okay. Three five two. What's a weakness on a three five two? Uh, there's no real uh, defenders on the on the wings, so the outside mids would be uh, just running up and down the pitch. Yep, and it's and so the corners are very accessible against the three five two. So attacks that naturally want to attack the corners, um, it's easier to do against three five two. Um, what's another area that tends to be uh, weak in a four back system. Like more of the deeper wings, like. It, it could be, that's like, one, that's one you'll have to watch. If they press their defenders way up into the attack, you're right. It could be the, the deep, it could be the wings, uh, deeper. That's possible. There's, but there's one more place that's definitely of huge interest to us, at least if you kind of buy into everything we've been talking about. There's an area that's very interesting to us that will be open a lot. The attacking mids and like the, yeah. um, the like, center fronts. Yeah, that, the kill zone. And in part of it is because with two center backs, there's issues sometimes with communication even between them of who's taking responsibility for it. Um, if the midfield gets disconnected from their back line, which happens a lot, especially in the U.S., then that kill zone is accessible. And the defense is sometimes slow to react because they want to keep their line. 
So these are all kind of some natural things that you can kind of have tucked in the back of your head. Doesn't mean they're going to be true. Sometimes teams have ways of adjusting. But as I'm watching the game play out, if I know I'm playing 4-3-3, this space is of interest to me before the ball ever kicks off. This space is of interest to me. So I know if we're ever in trouble, we've got two places to get away from pressure. And I know this kill zone area is going to get opened up a lot. We just we may have to figure out how we're going to access it. But look, so he plays it out to the one white space and look what they do next. Okay, they take off unchallenged. They get to about midfield. Finally, they get some pressure, so they change it up. And where do they go next? Where did they play the as soon as as soon as they got any pressure, where did they play the ball? Wide. To the other outside mid space that they have trouble guarding. So these are some things that these players, I mean, they've been prepped all week because they're pros. But this is stuff that you guys can begin working on and how you can begin helping. Once again, if you can help direct the ball, any time they start to get in trouble, if we can direct the ball to these spaces, then we can keep possession. And if we can keep possession, then we don't have to play defense yet. Make sense? A lot of information, huh? <laughs> all right, let's move on. Um, Let's go to game model. We're not going to spend much time on this, but does everyone has everyone seen some version of this in possession, transition out of possession, out of possession, transition into possession? You could call this offense. The blue could be offense and defense, and then transition, transition. Does that make everybody kind of with that? Yes. Okay. So here's where you want to get into this. You want to say, how will we play offense? Okay, are we, are we a counterattack team? Are we a build-up from the back team? Are we a possession team? Um, you know, and how will we play? Why do I want to know both of these? How do we, how we want to play offense, how we want to play defense? Are we high press? Are we low block? Are we counter press? Why, why do I want to know all of these things? To know how we're going to adjust the, um, our positioning depending on how the play goes. Yeah, I mean, if you're so if you're in charge of of the transitions, if you're in charge of changing us from one to the other, then you kind of have to know. Like, it's not if we're a build up from the back team, and I'm telling them to launch counterattack balls over the top every time. That's not very good advice because the rest of our players are setting up. You know, uh, if a team wants to build it up every time, it's probably better to direct when we win the ball and we need to transition to offense. It's probably better to tell them to drop and switch it than it is to try and break lines and go forward. Does that make sense? Because that matches how we want to play offense. Launching balls forward when people are opening up to possess, um, it, it may not work for us as well. And vice versa, telling the team to drop the ball and switch the ball when we're more of a counterattacking team, then that doesn't really match up because we've got a bunch of people flooding lanes quickly. So you want to know, you know, if we are uh, a buildup, but we are a low block defense, well, so what do we do when we lose the ball up by their box? Do I tell, do we suddenly become a high block or a high pressure team? Or do I tell our defense to drop all the way off kind of like basketball, where you try a shot at the hoop, and if it doesn't work, you drop back to your half and play defense there? Drop? Yeah, I mean, it, there's, not, there's not necessarily a set answer. What my point is, is you want to be clear about how your coach is asking you to play. Because if you're in charge from changing from one to the other, you don't wanna change us to something we're not doing. Does that make sense? Or you may get players that kind of lose their head and they just jump at whatever opportunities in two inches in front of them. And maybe your coach is okay with that. Or maybe your coach says, no, we are mid block. I don't care you know, what you see. And he may have his reasons or she may have her reasons. So the point is, is whatever those are, you, because you're in charge of it, you need to know how are we playing offense? How are we playing defense? And if your coach says, well, it's not always the same, great. But you need an understanding of it. Does that make sense? Yeah, that one didn't come up. Let's see if we can just pull this one up. 10 minutes, guys, 10 minutes. Yep.
All right, so let's let's shoot this real quick. They're they're about to shoot the ball. So black is shooting the ball right now. Okay. <clears throat> what? Let's assume the goalkeeper is going to save it. What kind of transition might we consider? If you're the white goalie. Counterattack. Okay. I and mean, actually. Why and everyone, where? Well, now that I'm thinking of it, since everyone's back like that, it looks like they're probably a possession team in a low block. They're definitely playing low block at the moment, whether they're whether they want to or or black forced them to. So what's probably some things you're going to think about on the transition right now? Are, are we in a shape to attack? Not really. There is one counterattack option. What would it be? And yeah, maybe two. Over the top to the, the, the highest man. Yeah, and the oh, only reason I say that is because look how high in their center backs are into the mid, into our field. Like they're giving you, you could be 10 yards, like if he would open up and get behind them, he's still not offside. So you, he could get a 10 yard head start. I would be, this is where I would say the great goalkeepers, they're playing one level ahead. This guy doesn't really offer us too much defensively. I would have already been pushing him up here well before the shot ever happened. So that he would be here at this moment. And now I could catch it and either throw or kick in one step. And now he's off to the races on the counter. Does that make sense? That would be if, if counter. Otherwise, what does our team need right now to get into an, any attacking shape? Assume you're going to save it. Uh, they need to spread out more and like gain control of, of the wings in the midfield. Yeah. So your transition is going to be what? Fast or slow? Um, more slow and out the back. Yeah, it's definitely going to be slow because you've got to give these guys time to get back. Because right now we're playing with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven defenders, maybe eight, eight defenders, and then two midfielders. So I'm going to guess that's probably not the formation that their coach gave them. They're probably not playing the 8-2, I'm guessing, but probably not. So they're going to need a few seconds to get back to what their formation is. Yeah. And you're in charge. That's the key. All right, so let's let's skip a little bit ahead. Um, just because we're at the end of time. Here's, here's one thing to think of it. This is how we do it. Once again, there's other versions. But... These are the main things that we ask the goalkeepers when they're trying to learn all this, okay? Uh, position, okay? Where to stand, orientation, where to face, focus, what should I be watching? Analysis, figure out the answers. And uh, that's also kind of the priority of the answers. Communication, direct the answer and be a goalkeeper. We call it po-face, okay? Position, orientation, focus, analysis, communication, execution, po-face. So we ask our, our keepers when they look at a moment. So in this one, if you say pull face, okay, position. Think of what the goalkeeper is in charge of. This is a girl's game. So the goalkeeper at the bottom, good or bad? Ball's over here. Sorry, ball's going to get thrown in. She's running up to grab it. Start with position, good or bad? If, if not, what would you change? If it is good, say good. It's okay. Like, okay. I'm sure, she, I think she probably could have been like at least maybe five, I'm not five yards, but um, just a little bit like further out because if a ball goes like, actually, here it goes. I don't know. Because she, there could be a through ball behind you that the, uh, the yellow person on like the corner of the six. This one here? Yeah. Okay, so you would have her closer to the player or like just or probably out just this a, way. probably just a few steps like if she was facing towards the other goal, probably a few steps to the left. But like somewhere here, maybe like a couple steps further out, yeah. But not okay. like that wise, like right. somewhere in there. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? I mean, different opinion, different reasons. Uh, I'd have the the woman on the far right mark more back post and on top of the 18 and I'd have the woman on at like the edge of the six and uh in white zone while the woman in between the 18 and the six mark the yellow at the six yard box so this one you pull back 
right to marker marker this one would zone and you'd, you'd bounce her out mm -hmm. this one you'd press up here uh correct okay and and how about the goalkeeper herself uh the goalkeeper could uh could be a step to the right but the play isn't in, in uh in like the play isn't like in play at the moment so it's fine okay all right and then does anybody else have any other opinion i like so i like how you guys are explaining it so we're gonna we're gonna hit it and then i'll i'll kind of walk you through what i would say but i like i like what you're saying i like that you've got reasons anybody else all right so i'll back up um the all the adjustments you just made i agree with all of them pull her back because she's marking grass out here and I haven't seen grass score too many goals. So this one's going to be the one that score goals, not that grass. So I would pull her back, move her back. I definitely would move her back. I would at least move her into the path to goal. Um, and I may have her mark. It, it just depends right now. There's not a lot of threat from the center mid. So it's possible. I would move her back to here. She'd be about two yards, three yards off the line and dead center. Why would I do that? Think about, go back to the very beginning. What's she in charge of organizing? The core. Core and? Weak side. Weak side. I think it's hard to do from here because look where her eyes are. Her eyes are here. The core is over here. The weak side's back here. So one of the things is, as a rule, it's very hard to organize something you can't see, right? If I pull her back and she kind of turns a little bit, almost like how you guys set up on corners, you know, where you angle out, I can stand here, I can still see all of this and I can organize it. If, uh, if she's marked up, if I pull her back, is this as much of a threat? I agree she's a threat right now. She's she's standing right, able to split both these girls in a touch. I agree she's a threat right now. If she comes back and marks her, is she a threat? Not as much. Not as much, right? It, it's still possible. Anything's possible, okay? But I'm going to argue the goalkeeper, if you can be here, I can still observe all of this, which is, of course, important. But this is, once again, this is where the goal is coming from most likely somewhere in here. So I want, I better have, I mean, right now, she's the one that is probably the, of everybody on the field, she's the most dangerous right now. Because the, da the danger areas behind her, these girls can't get there for like a week and a half. So I don't have to worry about them. This girl can get there in two steps and no one's gonna stop her from doing it. And notice where's her eyes. Where's this, where's this defender looking right now? She's this looking ball. at the ball. She's looking at the ball. So how many steps is this girl going to get to move, whether she decides far post, near post, far then near? How many steps is she going to get free before this girl even knows she's moving? At least two or three. Yeah, at least, I mean, at least, right? And then, and then I don't even know. She might get all of them free. She may never know that she's running. She may run all the way in here. They cross it in and she taps it in. I don't know. But the problem will be as a goalkeeper, I don't know either. She doesn't know because she's watching the ball and all the danger is happening behind her. You as a goalkeeper, think about it. Here's your danger area you with me. This is where 93% of the goals come from. And you're on the front edge of it with all of it pretty much behind you. Does that make sense? Like, I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't make sense like right, but does that can you visualize what I'm saying? If 93% of the goals come from here and you're on the very front edge of it looking this way, that means that whole space is behind you to some degree, either straight behind me or behind me and right, right? So now the most dangerous area on the field, I have no ability to organize because I'm clear up here on the front edge watching. At least if I'm here, I've, I've got a portion that's still in front of me when I look at the ball and a short turn of the head, not even 90 degrees, and I can check this. Luckily, I've only got really one major threat. But this is the kind of stuff where uh, planning on, on you know, transition, 
Any throw in, any free kick, I count those as transitions. Let's go one step ahead, and this will be kind of the last one. Let's say you see this moment. You make the adjustments. You move the players around how you want. They're going to try a ball in, and you're going to get it. What could you also be organizing right now if you were going to counterattack? Uh, where, where's opportunity? Specific. Where's some specific opportunity right now? We could be telling um, the uh, the uh, highest uh, uh, highest woman on white to um, kind of go towards the other side of the field um, because there's plenty of space over there, so we can send a ball there and she can yeah. run onto it and pretty much have a direct direct shot at the goal. Yeah, absolutely. So your opportunity is definitely here, right? Channel like for once again, I'll use our terminology: C, C and D, four and five. There's nobody there. I can put a ball in behind them. So you're right. You can either move her early or you could communicate that as soon as she sees me getting it, don't turn like a forward and run this way. Take off on a dead sprint this way and I'll meet you there with the ball. Either one, right? It depends. Where's this center back probably going to go when she sees the goalkeeper grab a cross? Which direction? Back towards her net. Yeah, probably back towards her net. So while she's doing this and this girl sprint across at full speed, it's still open. It's just, I'm just giving you an idea. I'm not saying it has to be the way, but I'm saying this is, as you get better and better at the goalkeeping, what you're thinking of is, yes, we don't even have the ball yet. I'm not, I'm going to organize everything from the core out. Okay. I'm going to make sure this area is locked up first, and then I'm going to work back towards the ball. But that's going to make you a very good goalkeeper. A great goalkeeper is going to do everything we just said, and I'm already going to have the transition in place. If it's a counterattack, great, I'm going to find space. But maybe it's a distribution, and so I need this girl flare out to the sideline, and I'm going to, it's a quick throw to the weak side. That's where it kind of depends on how your team wants to play, but do you get the idea? Like now I'm, we haven't even, I mean, she hasn't even got to the ball to throw it in, and I already have one solution for counterattack, one solution over here that's not generic, like specific. And I've already communicated that with either this girl or this girl, even though we haven't even gotten the ball yet. And it's going to be something like, hey, if you see me get the ball, get there quick. Hey, if you see me get the ball, slash over, we would say slash to, D, you know, uh, to 5D, slash to 5D. She would know what that means because we all use the same terminology. So she would get there. And that's the nice thing is we can we can say it out loud and the other team doesn't even know what we're talking about. But you get the idea. It doesn't matter if you use our system of organizing the field. You need something where you can say something to her quickly and she understands run here, not there. And now now you're that now you're on the, the path to becoming a great goalkeeper because you've managed the transition way before it even happened. All right, let's take a few questions. Coach Matt, take a few questions yep. and then let's wrap up if that's okay. Let's do it. Thank you. Yeah, so do you guys have any questions on, you know, what we've just been going over? Um, any questions on transitional moments in the game? Um, of course, I don't know if you, do you want to give them an example and have them ask or is it just you guys... We'll do this. If you guys have access to these, because obviously this is the kind of the worksheet that we didn't get through. So here's here's a question. This is be something we take goalkeepers through. Here's a, a scenario of a, of a picture. And then we would we would say here is that kind of po face analysis. So we go po face kill zone. And this is an example of what a goalkeeper gave us for this. OK. This would be a good thing for you guys to go through and look at. And once again, whether you use our system, okay, and then we have the same thing for this field down here, okay, go through and, and look through it. And once again, this is, it's not the only way to do this, but look at this picture and then come back and see if your answers are as detailed as these. And these are answers that we got from kids that are uh, going through training. This one's obviously a little bit younger than you guys. Uh, this one um, is actually kids high school and college would be answering this. But it'll give you an idea of how much detail and thought is going into how are we ending their possession 
and going into ours, or how are we ending ours and going it into defense? But it'd be a, it'd be a good it'd be a good exercise because that's really where you need to spend your time. And I'll give you this last example. These have the same thing, but here's what it says. There's a picture there. You would do the exact same thing, but you get 10 seconds to look at this picture. That's level one. You work your way all around to level five. We're going to give you a picture. You get two seconds to look at it. And you have to answer all of those questions as best you can. So we do something like one, two, thanks for playing. And then that's how we begin to develop our players. Slow at first, get it accurate. And then each of these levels keeps speeding up how much time you get to look at it. Yeah. And see, um, can you keep it going? Yeah, guys, you know, when honestly, anything you take away from this, um, you know, try things in training, try things in game if you're comfortable, um, you know, try it in training first and see if it works and then you can try and implement in the game. Um, but you guys are at the age where you're able to have candid conversations with both your coach and your center backs about some of these moments. Um, and, you know, obviously the whole team is, is you're able to have these conversations with everybody um, really kind of, reflect on your games, your trainings, um, you know, if there are situations in your trainings that where you have these transitional moments, see how you handled them, see what you could do better, what you did that you want to work on. Um, and then, you know, apply these to games that you watch Saturday mornings, premier leagues, you know, there's a premier league game, I think on every single week, every single day of the week when they're in uh, club season, um, you know, the, World Cup qualifying games are on right now. Great chances to to kind of put yourself in those goalkeeper shoes and and really take their experiences and learn from them. And and who knows, you could see something exactly like that. You could never see something they deal with. You know, it's 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 all the randomness of the game. And and you know, you just want to be prepared for whatever you may run into as a goalkeeper. Yep, hundred percent. Go go do simple stuff too. Go look go go on uh, YouTube and look up you know ten greatest counterattacks or whatever. Type in counterattacks. You'll get a you'll get a video. Watch how many of them do it, and then watch it in terms of how many of those greatest counterattacks were allowed to play through. How many were allowed to get to the kill zone or play through the kill zone? Just start to put it in a framework. Once again, it's just a framework. But once you start going back and watching some things and looking at those details. You'll be surprised at what you see. But that gives you some ideas on how to stop it as a goalkeeper. Cool. Everybody, thank you. Thank you. Let's thank Coach Matt and Coach Brett, please, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome, guys. Yep. Yeah, thanks, you guys. Thank you.